Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alexander, also known as Sander Yevitz, and today we will be playing Grim Dawn on hardcore difficulty with veteran included. And right now I am finishing the vanilla content. This is the last bits of the vanilla, vanilla game. My plan for today is to try to move as close as possible towards the last quests in the vanilla content as well as probably complete the Bastion of Chaos along the way. I am playing from a fresh account from scratch as you can see in the description so I am playing as a dead knight, the combination between soldier and necromancer. Right now I am currently wearing the four gear sets which I have bought the helmet, chest, shoulders and boots from Black Legion. And you can basically do this when you will when you achieve a certain amount of reputation with them. You just have to have a necessary reputation as well as a necessary amount of gold. In my opinion this set is very good, especially in, in these stages of the game, since it gives you a lot of um, ether, chaos resistance as well as some physical resistance, which in this stage of the game is hard to come by, even from the additional augments and or relics. So, for again, for anyone who is just tuning in, I am playing as a Dead Knight, combination between Soldier and the Necromancer. This is the Grim Dawn game, hardcore difficulty with Veteran included. And this is the first difficulty out of three possible ones. So right now I'm just working my way towards the Plains of Strife. In this location I want to find the portal which will lead me to the second item from the Ravari Legacy quest. A quest from the Ravari faction which will basically tell you to restore the Magdragon Shrine. The one, the one shrine you cannot activate by any other means, you just have to restore it from the quests by picking and using the necessary quest items for it. So I'm just slowly moving my way towards this quote-unquote battlefield and trying to find a location of the portal. I know it can spawn, spawn randomly here, but I'm checking every nook and cranny in this location so that I will will not I am trying to not miss it by any chance. Let's check the bottom side of this area. So when it comes to the type of that knight which I'm playing right now, I'm playing as a physical and internal trauma type of Death Knight. So all of my gear as well as constellation, devotion points, is dedicated towards boosting my physical damage as well as internal trauma type of damage. This is a very beginner friendly character, meaning that it will not require a huge amount of gear and or time for making this character basically tanky, more tankier and more damaging version in at the later stages of the game unlike the other classes and from at least for me if you are just trying this game out for the first time you should definitely especially on the hardcore you 
should definitely at least try to play this class. And from there you will see whether you like it or not. But uh, personally, I do not insist. I do not order you to play. You can play whom, whom, whomever you want. It's just my personal opinion. You can agree or disagree. It's completely fine. So, right now I haven't seen any portal just yet. Maybe it has spawned in to the further north. But nevertheless, let's check it. So you also want to avoid mines, which is um, located on the ground. You can easily, by the way, you can easily miss them, especially like this one. This was a mine. Especially if your resistances towards physical damage or and towards elemental resistances are low. The mines on this location can easily kill you if you are not very careful. Well, thankfully my resistances are on the higher side of things. I can show it to you while I'm kill when I will kill this ethereal obelisk and I will show you my resistances up, up till this point at the game. So I have 80 res uh, soft cap. Excuse me. I thought I was done with the mob around here. Okay. All the elemental resistance are soft capped, as well as poison, as well as piercing. Also bleeding, vitality, resistances are soft capped. As you can see, I am lacking right now some, until the soft cap limit, some eater resistances, as well as chaos resistance, and some stun resistance. I will try to gather this from constellation points, like an empty throne, and from augments and or relics later on i have found the necessary portal let's check around maybe there maybe there will be some elites right here no just some flesh hulks and dead eyes okay let's in this case let's enter this portal so, in this portal I need to collect the Spirit of Magdragon. I already found the Runestone of Magdragon, which was in the similar portal, but in a different location. It was in Bloodgrove. You also need to have one Ancient Heart, and then you will need to restore this shrine, which is located in the Astrakaran Valley, right to the eastern side of the area. You can see on my map is, it is marked as a desecrated shrine. If you try to approach it just by its, uh, just without the materials, it will say that this shrine is corrupted by the Chthonian energy, basically by the demoni demonic energy. So in order to restore it, you will need to first reach the certain amount of reputation with the Rovari faction, and then you will need to speak with the NPCs there at their camp and one of them will give to you the quests the quest with which will basically indicate you all the materials that you will be need to collect in, or in order to restore this shrine what will await you in those types of portals are basically different varieties of Chthonian demons so make sure before you came here, make sure that your resistance is towards vitality, um, type of damage towards ether and towards chaos are on the higher side of things. Because if they are not, well, then you basically have to be very careful. You always have to be very careful when playing on hardcore difficulty, but when your resistances are on the lower side of things, chances are that some of the elite monsters will melt you even if you have the high amounts of HP and or armor. Because in this game it's vital to have the 
though the armor, HP and resistances relatively close to each other in terms of numbers. Because otherwise, you will, uh, if you're lacking some of those type of elements, uh, monsters, uh, especially elite ones and bosses, will deal an enormous amount of damage to you. Even if you try to play it as safely as possible. So right now I'm just seeking this component and perhaps some elite monsters because I'm in need of one blueprint which is a part of the juggernaut relic. I haven't collected this blueprint just yet so I'm searching for it and this blueprint can drop randomly. What I mean by that is it can drop from a white monster, yellow monster from any chest, so it's a good idea to basically search and and or destroy everything that is destroyable in order to Increase your chances of obtaining this blueprint. So yes, yes, as you can see, all the monsters right here are from the um, demonic varieties, the Catonians. This basically means the type of demonic creatures in this game. By the way, you also can play the physical and internal trauma type of Death Knight by utilizing the other skills such as Cadence. I am currently utilizing um, Force Wave skill with the two-hander weapon and with the modified Tremor, which allows it, which allows me to sp basically spam the Force Wave like this, because without it, the Force Wave will have a cooldown. However, there are other builds, for sure, which include the other main offensive skills, such as Cadence, which you can utilize. But do keep, do keep in mind that with Cadence, you basically, the skill replaces your standard auto attacks, and this and Cadence skill works on every third hit, so the first two hit are your basic auto attacks and the third hit will proc the Cadence skill. But uh, when it comes to my playstyle, uh, right now I'm using the spammable force wave. I find that in this way at least you can kill things, especially a group of monsters, quickly and efficiently without trying to pinpoint or or move around some difficult stuff you just basically need to be aware of your positioning and you need first and the second thing you need to be aware of is where where your force wave is hitting so basically that's it Also, this area is marked as a dangerous dom domain, and what it means is basically it's a type of pseudo dungeon indicator. So every time you enter an area and uh, near your map icon, a skull with the dangerous domain will pop up. You basically uh, enter you basically have entered in a sort of a dungeon area. And also every dungeon area has its debuff. I can quickly show it to you what I mean. So like in this location the debuff is tainted, which means players are slowed but critical damage of players are increased. So every type of Dunge uh, quote unquote dungeon area have their own debuffs from 3 I believe up until 7 or 8 
So some of it can also work against you, some of it can work with you. For, so for example, in the Steps of Torment, which is another type of dungeon in this game, there was a debuff which basically increased monster attack speed but, but decreased their damage and the other one uh, worked vice versa against it. So uh, decrease their damage, but increase their attack speed. So they can, uh, they sometimes they can con contradict with each other. But nevertheless, it's a good thing if you keep a track of this of those debuffs, because especially if your resistances are not on the higher side of things. Some of those debuffs, like for example Chaos, and or Aether type of damage, can multiply. And the location itself can be very difficult for your character to completely clear it. So I haven't encountered Spirit of Magdragon just yet. Perhaps it will be at the northern side of things, of this of this area. Let's check, nevertheless. Also, when it comes to skill points, also can briefly show it to you. I have basically maxed the soft soft cap force wave and rush towards the soldier's ultimate, which was all around rage. I have. I have uh, leveled one point into field command only for the ghoulish hunger proc. Later on I will be soft capping the skill as well. And in the necromancer tree I have leveled the spectral binding as well as spectral red to the respective soft cap parameters. And now I'm working my way towards the mark of torment. Also, in those types of location, oh, and by the way, in terms of attributes, I have leveled only physique up until this point. So, where was I? Yeah, I was talking about the thing that you need to keep in mind, the one more thing that you need to keep in mind when you are stepping in, this, in those types of location. So, in every location, there will be a higher chance that a treasure chest will pop the treasure chest which is surrounded by the chains so you will need one i believe it's one dynamite in order to open it and those treasure chest contains a lot of green items a good amount of gold as well as blueprints especially if you're playing from a fresh account and they have a higher chance to pop some legendaries from them. Right now I haven't seen any treasure chest just yet, but hey, who knows, maybe I will encounter it later. The gold, and the gold, the star icon, icon will indicate the, the necessary Location which you will need to head in order to complete your quest and or item. It can indicate also a boss which you will need to kill. But in this case it indicates the item which I will need to collect. So let's first clear the area from demons. And then I will collect this item. Yep, Spirit of Magdragon. So let's clear the rest of the area. And then we will move on to the next portal. Obsidian Cluster also here works as a pseudo chest as well. So sometimes they also can drop the 
green items and or legendaries. They're, it's completely random. Okay, so this rift. This rift actually will lead you towards the obsidian throne. And this location... It's... You can say it's a second level of the dungeon. One of the NPCs actually will give it, will give a quest to you later on to visit this location and kill a unique boss and collect his item. Unfortunately, right now I haven't reached the necessary amount of reputation in order for in order for in order to unlock this quest. So I am here just for the sake of extra loot and or chances to collect the missing blueprints. So right now I'm fighting an elite monster, which is... yep, he is already dead. So, for anyone who is just tuning in, first of all, hi, my name is Alexander, also known as Xander Yevitz, I am playing Grim Dawn on hardcore difficulty with veteran included. I'm on, currently on the first difficulty out of three possible. And I'm playing from scratch, from a fresh account, as a necromancer. Combination between, I'm sorry, as a dead knight. Combination between soldier and necromancer. And for the rest, I hope you are enjoying this gameplay and my commentary. So one thing to keep in mind also in this location, in those types of locations, often when you enter a certain room, enemies can spawn around you or behind you. So like this example. So it's always a good idea to keep a track of where you are right now and if you have a way to retreat if things go wrong. Yep, so I have reached boss of this location, you basically need to watch out of his fire attacks and use a hit and run technique, so basically hit him a couple of times and then move back. Especially if you are some type of melee or mage caster, you can utilize this rock and to kite him around it. So he is dead. Let's search the rest of the area. He was guarding an exalted stash. No recipes, just loot from it. So this rift actually leads us from this area. We will be utilizing it but later on, a little bit later, when we will complete the... clear the rest of the area first. Because perhaps we have missed some... I have missed elites, which are hiding. Also, if you play this game for the first time, there are a lot of destructible terrains, such as walls, doors, even wardrobes, which can drop you green items and or legendaries, so... You can check them from time to time. And what I mean by that is you can hover your mouse cursor over them. And if in some way, shape or form, it, it works on the destructible terrain, but on the war drops, you basically can check them with the auto attacks like this. Or you can use your skill, main offensive skill. And if it can be destroyed, well, chances are that sometimes an item will pop from there. So right now I'm almost done with this location. 
So far I haven't encountered any more elites just yet. Maybe there will be some more later on. Almost missed chest. Let's see what lurks here. By the looks of it, nothing, just a regular demon. Alrighty then. I also can quickly show it my constellation points, my devotion points, so let me clear the area first from the enemies and then I can safely show it to you. There's an elite, very good. Let's try to kill him as fast as possible. Yep. Did that. And only a tiny bit of an area left unexplored. So no more enemies here. Okay. So, let's talk about the devotion points and the constellation. So I have basically started with the ghoul, and then I have moved on towards the eel constellation. Then I have picked Scholar of Light. I did this to unlock, to have the necessary affinities to uh, be able to unlock the Kraken constellation. When I have leveled Kraken Constellation, I have moved on to Behemoth, leveled his Constellation as well, and now I'm working to level the Revenant Constellation. My plan then will, will be to move towards the Chariot of the Dead, and in order to unlock it, first I will be leveling the Empty Throne Constellation. Just a lonely demon which has spawned. So, let's quickly head towards this rift. And let's actually open the portal and go back towards the... Actually, let's get back towards the Devil's Crossing to sell all the items which I don't need. And check them if they have the necessary attributes which I'm looking for. Keep in mind I'm looking for physical and internal trauma type of damage. Hmm, interesting. To all damage, cunning spirit, plus 74 offensive ability. And it gives 15% chaos resistance and 34, 35% elemental resistance. Hmm. I think I will utilize it. I will definitely lose some physical and internal trauma type of damage, but I will be getting instead the boost towards the chaos resistance and towards the elemental resistance because the vitality resistance i'm sorry the wrong are 33 percent over maximum okay let's try it let's try it i'll definitely be selling all the one-hander stuff all the shields One hand receptor also. Physical lightning. Nope, not mine. Hmm. Interesting, but I I do think my rings are better right now at least. So let's sell this as well. Elemental type, nope. Lightning heater. Hmm. 
Now, this is a good weapon. It's actually a very good one, not only because it gives me the, the attack speed and some resistances. It also gives the flat physical damage, which I will be definitely equipping this one as well. I do not need this chest card. Nope, skipping this. I'll skip this as well. And by skipping, I mean selling. Okay, so... Let's quickly dump all the components back to the common stash. As well as some craft materials. And let's pick up the rune stones of Magdragon as well as one, I believe, ancient heart. Yep. So that I can restore the shrine. Let's change the amulet as well as weapon. All right, so amulet is definitely changed. Let's change the weapon. Let's apply Oleron's blood towards my axe. And also I need the component from Homestead that also can boost my internal trauma as well as physical type of damage let's go there quickly buy it and apply it so homestead where are you at so yep waypoint towards homestead and let's buy this component that's not it. Mm, yep, there it is. Let's apply it. So Force Wave is now hitting by itself from 10k up till 14k. That's actually pretty good because before I was hitting from 6k up till 12k maximum. Interesting. Alright, so let's head towards the Desecrated Shrine and let's restore the Magdragon Shrine. I think with the resistances this high I will... Well, if I'm... If I am still continue to play safe as safely as possible, I will not have any problems. At least in the vanilla type of content the furthest i should definitely say that the further the furthest point that i have managed to come by was uh up till act five up till the roguelike dungeon in act five so i have played this game before but not on stream like three or four months ago and on hardcore difficulty i have played as an inquisitor and unfortunately i have died in the in the death room in act 5 on the normal difficulty so that's the furthest points which i was able to come by so i do hope that i have managed to clear this entire game at least on the first difficulty but let's see what happens, nevertheless. Okay, let's... Friend with Outcast. I mean, it's the an, another faction. Nevertheless, let's restore the shrine. You do need, you do, you do need to watch out, especially first time when you 
played this game, most of the shrine, when you click on them and try to restore, especially the corrupted ones, not the ruined, the corrupted ones, can spawn group of elites from them. And they can be very deadly, especially if they, uh, they surround you, and you will not have necessary res resistances to fight them just yet. So let's talk to this guy quickly. You can find out who he is. I already know who he is, but I'm not gonna spoil you for you who he is, if, especially if you're playing for the first time. So when you talk to him, the quest will be finished and he will award you with one devotion point. Let's level the vitality. Resistance the knot in the Revenant constellation. Then the next one will be 6% of attack damage, will convert to health and plus 175 health. That's good. Now let's move on. Towards the main quest. I cannot complete the power of our enemies quest just yet, simply because I have used or haven't collected enough um, tainted brain matter, so I'm missing this component. I have Ancient Heart as well as Blood of Cthulhu, but I'm lacking the tainted brain matter in order to finish this quest. So perhaps some materials later on can drop it. But we we shall see about it. So one thing to keep in mind when you are playing this type of character, especially um, not only this type but every other character who has the internal trauma type of damage is that you need you need to watch out for the enemies who has shields on them who can put a shield on them and on also the enemies who have the reflective sign on them so what this basically does is that each time you try to attack this type of enemies with with your damage the mo the majority of damage will be tra uh, transferred towards your character so you can be dead simply from, not from the monsters, but from your damage. This mechanic is so, this reminds me like um, a thorn mechanic from Diablo 2, if anyone remembers this game as well. I'm trying to find, find those types of enemies. Haven't find them just yet. But I definitely encountered them along my road. So it's basically a good thing not to spam your force wave often, especially when you see that their shields is popping up. In any other circumstances you can definitely do so, but when their shields are up, just try to play a get, uh, play around their shield cooldowns and that's it because the fact of the matter is that those types of enemies are not very tanky and if you wait long enough for uh, if you wait long enough that their and their shields will turn off you can basically uh, Kill them very, kill them very quickly. So right now I'm slowly moving towards the necropolis, which is the last area of the vanilla content.
I'm ignoring those mines simply because I have uh, high enough armor as well as physical resistance and elemental resistance and HP pool. But if your character are not that tanky, you definitely need to watch out for, for it. Perhaps you can use them to your advantage when you, tr when you pull a very large group of mob mobs. You can utilize those mines to deal a certain amount of damage towards the group of mob. See, that's a very good example. So basically possessed archmages, sometimes they will use the shield to reflect certain amount of damage back to your character. So... Physical damage, that is. So if you're playing like a physical or internal trauma type of guy, just try to play around their shield cooldowns. And that's, that's basically it. So let's clear the area which is called Gates of Necropolis. Perhaps we will encounter a blueprint for my missing recipe, which I need to craft the Juggernaut Relic. I'm also like trying to open every chest because the legend I'm at the point where legendary items are start to dropping and they can drop from they also can uh, are dropping randomly even from the regular map they can drop even from the regular map so any anyway it's a good idea to try to open every chest on your way when you are playing the game So right now it seems that only regular monsters are around here, not the elite ones. Let's keep looking nevertheless. I have gathered some, well to be completely honest, three legendaries along the way. Two of them were dropped from, dropped from step, step, Steps of Torment, excuse me. And the third one was dropped from, I believe it was from a treasure chest. So the two legendaries were two shields and the one is one-handed ma one handed mace. So I haven't got any, but those legendaries, I believe, does not fit very well on my character due to the fact that I'm looking for a two-hander legendary and or some armor which give me physical and or inter internal trauma type of damage but not the one-hander weapon definitely so there's a secret here actually if you playing for the first time you can go through the ethereal ground basically keep track of your hp and something goes wrong you can pop a healing potion and you can find here hidden spoils which will give you a nice amount of green items yep i have collected it so let's move on In this, er in this area you will be fighting Aetherials at the beginning and later on you will be fighting the Catonian guys. So those Ablix basically as long as they are alive they will hit you with the Aether type of damage and they will spawn circles around, um, under you as well as enemies. 
so it's a good idea to try and first get rid of uh, the mobs which are surrounding them and then try and kill them as fast as possible because otherwise they can all definitely overwhelm you especially if you do not have a good AOE up until this point and you are struggling to fight a group a big groups of monsters which is definitely not the case when you are playing with the force wave simply because it can hit through multiple targets and its damage is not being reduced by any means I wonder, can I just stand on the ground and hit this guy? I definitely can I remember I used to kite this guy a lot but right now due to resistances and resistance reduction I can definitely just stand on the ground and spam him with the force wave until the point when he is dead basically so let's go back a little bit and clear the rest of the area which I have missed So this shield, like the Archimage just spawned, you see, as soon as the shield dropped, I just nuked him. So you can basically apply the same tactics, whether you, you are playing with the just physical type of character, or physical peers, or physical and internal trauma type of character. I do not know, how, however, if their shields can deflect the element, elemental means and or chaos types of damage I only have research about the physical types of damage so let's quickly kill this group of monster also monsters And let's move on with the rest of the area. Hopefully I can encounter some type of elite here. Nope, only regular yellow and white mobs. So, for anyone who has just tuned in, hi, my name is Alexander, I am playing Grim Dawn on Hardcore Difficulty with Veteran Included. This is the third difficulty that I'm playing on right now out of three possible. Currently I'm playing as a Dead Knight, combination between Soldier and Necromancer. And I'm working my way towards the... Ending of the vanilla content, final quests. And for the rest of you who are watching from the beginning, hope you enjoy my commentary and the gameplay. So this is another blacksmith which you will encounter when you have entered this when you will enter this area. He can craft you some items if you want, but I'm skipping him right now. And also the thing is that all the items that he will be crafting, he will... Every blacksmith will have their own unique perks, I could say. So basically this blacksmith is... Whenever he crafts an item for you, it basically applies to you the bleeding resistance, vitality resistance, and some energy regeneration. You can check what other blacksmiths have by hovering their, uh, your cursor and by looking at what types of modifiers 
they will apply towards your items and or relic. So let's see if I missed something here. Looks like not. In this case, let's continue. I am planning to complete the Bastion of Chaos dungeon before I finish the main quest line in uh, in the vanilla game at least. In the vanilla game, yep. I'm planning to first complete the Bastion of Chaos. Despite not having the Anasteria and an the Outcast. She is being called the outcast despite not having the outcast quest to go there. So right now we are fighting cultists. So as you can see no materials here already. And by the way, if you're playing for the first time, if you if you want to want to know the lore, want to know why we are fighting cultists and ethereals, basically I can tell you uh, the lore in this game explained pretty well, the majority of it. You will definitely understand what is happening, who is fighting whom, and also the other good thing about this game is that you will find on the lore notes and with the dialogues from the uh, from the different NPCs, they will remark, they will mark your actions along the way. So, from my perspective, it's a good thing to do so. So you feel not just like an another generic type of hero. You, at least the developers of this game, have tried to make your character some, I would say, quote unquote, special in terms of your influence over the events which is happening during your campaign in the game, at least. So, from my perspective, they did a very good job. So now we are encountering also demons. Let's check if there is any elites around here. I'm also planning to level this character until level 100. However, I do not yet i should say i do not uh, plan to beat the records with this character like in the shattered realm modes or the crucible mode because first i want to see all the content all the content that campaign uh, can provide simply because i haven't managed to beat it beat the whole campaign with the DLCs just yet. I have beat only the vanilla campaign, but haven't beat any uh, DLC DLCs, which I've heard was difficult, but beatable, at least for this character. I don't know about the other ones. So let's check the crypt entrance. So once again, as you see, it has written Dangerous Domain, you have entered Dangerous Area, and it will show you the debuff, so you basically... can check every time you will enter this area what, what debuff you have, and how you will gonna play according to this type of debuff that you're currently having.
I have leveled up once again, so... And have killed the lead, which haven't dropped me any of the rare items. That's unfortunate, so... Yep, have managed to reach the Mark of Torment. Let's level the... Level 1. It says level 2 simply because one of my item. I can show you what it is, actually. So... I believe one of my item gave me the plus one towards the Mark of Torment. Well, some of it at least. Okay, and let's put it on the... Number three will be Mark of Torment. So basically Mark of Torment, as far as I understood, is an ability which allows you to withstand the huge amounts huge amount of damage that's the one thing and the other thing the cert the percent of this damage will be reflected towards your enemy the only downside is that you cannot use this on the multiple targets it only work on one target, yep, it says only one enemy can be marked at any one time. So you can count it as an extra survive survivability skill. Oh, and by the way, I should mention that I haven't even touched the survivability skills of the soldier. So as you can see, basically I have leveled only force wave. So I haven't touched military conditioning. Decorated Soldier, Scars of Battle, and Meneer's Will. But be sure that I will be leveling them as well. One thing to keep in mind is that if you feel that you are squishy and you, you need to level some of those skills, you can definitely do this. Why? Because at any point of the game you can respect your skill points as well as attribute points and devotion points. The one thing you cannot change is the class that you will be picking at the beginning and the secondary class. So for example, if you will choose the soldier and necromancer, you will be stuck uh, with them until you, you will decide to create to create another character. So right now I'm slowly killing ghouls and moving towards the boss of this area. Do keep in mind, however, that I'm standing on those pools simply because my resistance is towards bleeding is more than 80% so if yours are the same you can definitely do this but if not it's a good idea to always try to move from the pools which enemies are trying to create under you whether it be the bleeding effect or the either type of damage or whatever the case it may be in your example. Mm, another reason is to move on from the pools is the fact that some of the pools can not only deal a certain amount of damage to you, they also can reduce your resistances. So, for example, some of it can reduce your physical resistances and or some resistances of your... Uh, some magical resistances, so... You will need to move your character according, uh, accordingly. So, basically, keep be on the lookout for what en enemies are throwing towards you and whether or not you need to step it, or you can just ignore it and stand right on top of it. So now I'm... I believe I cleared 
the half of this area. So let's actually move a little bit to the north and then let's go to the left side. So far in this gaming session I haven't encountered any legendaries, but I do hope to find them along the way. Even if they are bad ones. I mean, I am not planning to disenchant them just yet, simply because I do not know which of them are the good ones, which of them are bad ones. I'm just collecting them and moving them to the common stash and that's it, in the separate a separate stash slot. I will definitely try to use Mark of Torment on elites and bosses as soon as I will approach, as soon as I approach them to check how it works. I mean, not in theory, but on practice. So let's kill these groups of ghouls first. So I am slowly approaching towards the end of this area. The green circle around me, which you can definitely see from time to time, is another constellation proc from the Behemoth constellation. Basically, there's a chance when an enemy hits me that a percent amount of HP can be healed from a certain period of time. So it acts as a sort of another uh, healing a healing effect. It also is very helpful very helpful if you're toning in HP potion of, uh, in this game is on cooldown. Yep, the boss runs straight towards me. Let's use Mark of Torment on him. There's also an elite. Let's move on from the ethereal ground. Yep, boss is dead. I will definitely check what type of green items I have gotten. But later, right now, I'm just plan to finish this area and restore the shrine also. There's the first item. Legendary item, it means. Wow, I haven't expected this quote-unquote luck. Well, not quote-unquote, this is actually a very good item. Grasp of Unchained Might. So basically it has the flat physical damage. What I mean by that is that six from six to seven physical damage acts as a flat physical damage. It boosts my physical, internal trauma type of damage, bleeding, attack speed, casting speed, pierce resistance. It gives also plus two to soldiers exclusive skill, tolerance rage. And it has a proc unchained fury, which reduces my Defensive ability a little bit, but it buffs significantly my offensive ability as well as attack and casting speed. I will be definitely equipping those gloves as soon as I hit the town. Let's level the constellation point in the Revenant constellation, the devotion point that is. And then let's continue on with the story with the campaign I mean I meant 
let's try to not miss the chest. And I also remember that you can click, yep. You can basically, in order, if you're playing for the first time, in order to not go back all the way around, there's a loose torch here, which acts as a switch. You can cover the mouse cursor over it and click on it, and the wall will move on. And it acts as a sort of a shortcut towards the entrance of the crypt. So let's go towards the inner necropolis rift gate. I definitely right now I'm approaching towards this location. By the way, if you are wondering why I uh, why am I mentioned the attack speed as well as casting speed, it's simply because the force wave is a skill that is purely depending on attack speed, not the uh, excuse me, pur purely depending on casting speed, not at the attack speed modifier. So the more casting speed you have, the faster you will be attacking with the force wave. The cadence which I was mentioning at the beginning of the stream, the cadence type of skill is depending more on not more depending on the attack speed, not on casting speed. So let's clear the shrine. Three elites, that's actually very good. Let's use Mark of Torment on one of them. And let's kill the rest. Let's quickly level the Devotion point from Revenant. So more casting speed, more damage to undead. More attack speed, but that doesn't matter. And the last point will be the Raise Dead proc. So basically, I have a chance to proc Skeleton, which can slow our target's movement for 3 seconds, but the main reason why I'm, uh, why I'm picking this is because every Skeleton can reduce target resistance. So let's continue on. There are some materials here for sure. Let's use Mark of on and the Mark of Torment on it. So no problem here. Let's move on. Let's actually check if I miss something there in terms of chests or elites or both. There are an elite there. That's actually really good. Use the mark on him and then nuke him. Yep, he's dead. I do wonder, however, should I, like, try to... level my faction reputation first, before I move on to the next difficulty, or should I open all of them and then level their reputation, level the reputation with them? I haven't decided just yet, but only time will tell. I mean, also, it will be depending on how much resistances I have at a certain point. And how well I will be progressing, progressing th through the main campaign. Two elites. Mark of Torment is already is on cooldown just yet, but I didn't need it as it turned out. Perhaps I need it right now. Let's use it. So 
So I have managed to secure the inner rift, inner waypoint. It's a belt where the level 50 it requires level 58. I don't know, should I use it or should I? I think I will keep it on in my stash. Don't know just yet. Let's collect it first. And let's talk to Ulgrim. So basically, Ulgrim is telling to you that you need to destroy the blood wagon first before you can enter the tomb. I will do so, but first... Let's check the rest of the area. So my plan is to destroy those wagons, yeah, that's for sure, but before I move on to the tomb of... The, the, to the tomb of the Watchers, I will... Be, I will head towards the northern side of the map and there will be a destroyed bridge which you can repair with the scrap material as well as gold and this bridge will lead you towards the entrance of the Bastion of Chaos dungeon. Also, thank you for the following. Let me quickly check. Thank you for the follow. I hope you all enjoy the gameplay that I'm providing right now and my commentary. Whether you are new to this game or is already experienced and just watching it for fun for general information I do hope that you all having at least a little bit of fun it doesn't hurt you in any way shape or form so currently I'm heading towards the northern side of this area And trying to not to miss any monsters and or elites. Which can give me the missing recipe for the Juggernaut Relic. So... Currently... Well, to be honest, I'm missing the two pieces from the Juggernaut Relic. I haven't got the recipe for the Mistborn Talisman and I haven't got the recipe for the... How do you like to call it? Um, yep, yeah, that's what I said. Just watch it for fun. And the commentary that I provide, it's... Uh, you can... How do I put it? Um, It's simply just to inform you, to uh, provide, uh, to explain my opinion on certain things, maybe to teach you in some way, like um, I was give, I was explaining before with the hit and run techniques and some of the resistances stuff, which for the first time, especially, can be very tricky to understand from the get go. So. Nevertheless, let's continue. I have managed to open the exalted stash. Unfortunately, no blueprint just yet. Only the green items and some blue ones. Let's can, let's actually clear the northern side of the map first before we head to the western side. 
right now with my resistances being so high as they as there is i'm wondering at the bastion of chaos could i stand on one place and basically face tank the final boss or i think it's a bad idea well with the mark of torment probably but right now um, my intention is to play safe so i think i will apply hit and run technique as i usually do so basically one force wave and move back a little bit one force wave and move back so first let's destroy the final wagon and then let's move on to the bridge repair site which will lead us to the entrance towards the bastion of chaos so in case if you are wondering why i haven't paused and read all the lore notes it's uh, due to the fact that i have already played this game a couple of months back like at the summer but not on stream and i have already know what um, well the majority of stuff about the lore in this game up until act 5 so for me all the lore notes and all the dialogue with NPCs are just for experience points, nothing else. Let's check this area. So, so far so good. I could say it's this class. I will. I can. You in in case. In case I will beat the main campaign and the DLC, DLCs, I will be definitely doing some sort of a class over you for the first difficulty at least. With my advices some pluses some minuses and my personal opinion about the campaign before i will move on to the second difficulty so that's the plan at least i mean i cannot guarantee it since this is hardcore difficulty but i will at least try to make sure that everything will go smoothly and without any deaths but hey, one could one could only hope. So I do cleared every blood wagon. And I don't remember. No, there are no leads here. Okay, so let's head to the northern side of the map. Near the repair site where the bridge is. And I have forgotten actually to put my point into physique. So, for anyone who is wondering, I, uh, on this character I basically haven't spent any point on, on cunning core spirit. I have put all my points into physique. So let's see what it takes. It takes 40 scrap and 10,000 iron beads to repair. Mm, I need to get back to Devil's Crossing and check if I have the necessary amount of scrap. Let's check first. And also right here I can quickly change the gloves that I have collected. I have collected the legendary gloves. Which is very fortunate because it has all the necessary type of damage that I need. And also it has some casting speed, some buff, some buff towards the soldier exclusive skill. So let's change with my glove, gloves, excuse me. All right, let's check the rest of the green items. I, I'm definitely selling, oops, that's the wrong NPC. I will be definitely selling all the one-hand scepters as well as guns and 
or bows simply due to the fact that as well as some cloth armor because I will not be utilizing it so for me it's just gold So far I'm looking for the new heavy pants with the physical and internal trauma type of damage as well as helmets. But now I'm in no luck to find it just yet. I mean, why am I complaining? I have got the... Well, for me right now is the best gloves with this type of build. And I'm complaining about the green pants right now. That's just silly. So selling the caster stuff, selling the definitely selling all the elemental damage types. Let's check the third inventory slot. Nothing useful right here also, except this belt. So uh, this belt, I don't know about it, actually. I mean, it has good defensive ability and some good resistances, as well as some buffs towards the soldier passives. But it lacks the physical damage as well as some internal trauma. Hmm, I don't know about it. Let's check the other green items. And the books are just for casters as well as rifles. So nothing useful just yet. Okay, let's then dump everything into the common stash. As well as scraps. So, as I remember, I need 40 scraps and 10,000 gold. Okay. So. So, 40 scraps. Let's put the belt into this belt into the stash. I can briefly show it to you the armor that I have got. Also, for me, it's a very good example of a very good uh, of a good distribution of stats. This armor can, uh, can be used by the combination of the classes like Commando and also the Shieldbreaker. It has the flat fire damage, physical damage, also more fire damage, physique. In a huge amount of elemental resistances as well as chaos resistance as well as buffs to, to blast shield, deadly momentum and some ages of manier so this is also a very good type of armor however it requires a different class, not the one that I'm playing right now so let's head towards the repair site Wait a second, before I head, I, I remembered one more thing. Since I'm heading to the Bastion of Chaos, I need to craft the Skeleton Key. So, I can briefly explain to you why. So, basically, um, certain types of locations, such as Steps of Torment and Bastion of Chaos, as well as Port Valbury will be locked by the giant gates and when you hover your mouse cursor over it it will says to you that it requires a skeleton key in order to enter 
to craft skeleton key you basically talk to blacksmiths and you can craft it by uh, using certain amounts of materials as well as gold but you need to keep in mind once you enter this area you cannot teleport from it unless you die or unless you complete it thoroughly and you kill the final boss in this case you can uh, teleport from it now, there will be a, some sort of an obelisk which you can click on and this obelisk will basically te uh, will teleport you back to the entrance of this dungeon let's double check if I have freed this space in the inventory and then let's head to the Tony Rift so quickly check my debuffs so afflicted basically i have more resistance towards vitality but less health overall towards vitality type of damage i can definitely see right now that legendary gloves are working very well due to the fact that the attacks the um, casting speed difference between those gloves and mine previous gloves were enormous and that's not even considering that i haven't even touched the squad tactics from the soldier tree Can I head? Yep, I can head upstairs, but from different direction. Let's move back and let's move back and head upstairs. Also, even though I have a good legendary gloves on me right now, I am still trying to pay attention to what my enemies throw under me, what they will attack me with, simply because I don't, do not want to get myself killed uh, due to the fact that I, due to the fact that I overestimated my damage or my tankiness, uh, you know, as, the, as they say, better safe than sorry. It applies also to this, this game, especially on hardcore difficulty. Okay, let's see what this exalted stash contains. Some spell sage boots, and that's it couple of green items oh and also one thing to keep in mind especially if you are trying this game for the first time and you haven't got far in terms of campaign progress the enemies in this game can quickly even if you have the necessary amount of resistances and or HP they can quickly surround you and kill you so one thing to always keep in mind is your your ability to retreat from a from aoe or from group of monsters S uh, simply if you are trying to avoid any damage that is being thrown to you at any type but you are not sure or you have forgotten about the retreat path chances are that there will be a point especially in the roguelike dungeons which i will be heading right now towards the entrance of it there will be a point when the when your inability to 
retreat will be the death of your character, especially on hardcore difficulty. So far, I'm so far I'm just clearing the surrounding area around the entrance of this dungeon. Nothing difficult. Sometimes there will be a chain stash, and chain stash basically requires one dynamite to open it. This chain stash have a higher chance to have in it a blueprint and or some legendary items as well as every chain stash have guaranteed amount of some green items as well as blue ones. If you noticed I have run through, I uh, have run past this portal simply due to the fact that if you click on this portal it will teleport you back towards the necropolis entrance and you will need to go back again towards the location where I have repaired the bridge and start this whole process of uh, clearing this location as well as looting all the mobs from the beginning. And as far as I remember, there will be also another portal that will lead you from here back towards the necropolis entrance. Interestingly, interestingly enough that there are not so much elites right here. Only yellow and white mobs. Oh, and I almost forgot, there's, there is also a shrine here, which can give me necessary devotion points towards the Revenant constellation. Let's head there first. I am trying to destroy the wardrobes and bookshelves simply because sometimes they can drop you green items as well as some lore notes. So it's a good idea to always check. Sometimes you will get lucky. But sometimes you just you will just collect another legendary. Okay, so this time it's a shield. It's an actual shield, not the weapon that looks like a shield. It gives acid, bleeding damage, poison, some resistances as well as some convertation of physical damage towards acid damage, poison retaliation, and some bonuses towards retaliation. And it has some pluses towards retribution, Drix, Evil Eye. I believe it's a combination between the Occultist and the Old Keeper. But need to double check. Let's quickly level up the last devotion and put it on the force wave in the Revenant constellation. And then let's continue on. So far so good. I have got two legendaries in this game session. One of them was gloves, which I'm wearing right now. And the other one, as you just as you've seen is the legendary shield. Remind you, not the weapon that looks like shield, because two of them are lying in my inventory right now in the common stash. I can quickly show it to you uh, when I will complete the Bastion of Chaos. 
This time it's actually a legit shield. That's what I'm talking about, treasure trove. So basically every time you encounter this in your campaign, it will say to you that it will take one dynamite to break it open. Let's see what's inside. Any blueprints? Nope. Only items and some materials. This is the boss that is guarding the entrance towards the Bastion of Chaos. Interesting, interestingly enough, he is not doing any damage towards me. Even when Mark of Torment was off, he was doing little, little to no amount of damage towards my character. Even though I am not, I do not consider my character to be the tankiest of all. I have gathered a blueprint. Let's see what it has. So, physique, health, physical resistance, and retaliation damage. So, it's basically for characters who want to use more retaliation damage. And it requires a shield also. Let's learn it. And let's head towards the Bastion of Chaos itself. So we see, when I hover the cursor, it says so Sealed by Ancient Power requires a Skeleton Key. Basically every area, like I was mentioning, Steps of Torment, that's the first area which you will encounter. And then it would be the... Well, it depends. You, uh, If you go uh, at the end of the conflagration, there will be a waypoint, a portal, that will teleport you towards the Port Valbury, which will have the same door with the skeleton key requirement. The Bastion of Chaos also has one. And also, I believe, the in the Gloom Vault in Act 5, there's also a some type of uh, I forgot how it is named some type of a dungeon which requires a skeleton key okay so let's click on it and then let's move further let's kill first those monsters and then I will quickly check what debuffs do I have so basically crippling, monsters attack will slow me, but their attacks in general are slower. And then vengeful, so monsters have increased retaliation effects, but reduced armor. So not very bad. Also managed to level up. Let's level Mark of Torment some more and put one point into physique as usual. I do believe that this area will contain the... Um, well, not this one, the next one will contain the... Uh, will contain more groups of elite monsters. Because I haven't encountered any blueprint for the Mistborn Talisman. Or for the... What? I forgot how it was called. For the Juggernaut Relic. Okay, so first floor of this dungeon, Discord. Let's see how I will... will... What fight will I put up against those mobs? So, one tip that you can utilize, especially if you're playing the melee caster and or mage type of character 
you see this obsidian spine. Sometimes there will be a group of monsters which will be swarming around this area. And they cannot harm you unle uh, unless you will click on this spines and they will disappear basically. If you're playing a caster type of character, you can basically stand in the safe area right here and you can kill all the mobs even before you, uh, you enter the area. So it's a good idea to utilize this tactic, especially if you do not think you can kill them um, all, well, if you can kill them all as quickly as possible when the door will be open, or if you in general are afraid because there can be a group of elites which uh, is gathered near the entrance. Nevertheless, try uh, do not be afraid and try to utilize this method. I remember I utilized this method as well when I have played on Inquisitor. I my main offensive skill was the Word of Pain, and basically every time I have encountered the Obsidian spines, which act as a door towards a certain area. I tried to debuff all the mobs, and they uh, they were all dead even before I have stepped one foot, make one step into the area on uh, in which I will I was heading. So this is also a good example. Like, wait a second, they are all gathering around the obsidian spine. Just. Use your range ability, and you can kill them even before even before you will be entering the room, the necessary room. Those crystals, which are spamming the vitality quote-unquote lasers are dealing towards you the vitality and the chaos damage so keep in mind that before you are entering here your vitality and chaos as well as physical resistances need, need, need to be on the higher side of things And also I forgot to mention that I am utilizing the mod called Grim Internals, which highlights how many monsters I have healed in general, how many bosses, heroes, champions, as well as regular mobs, items I have collected, gold, as well as experience, and uh, rough time uh, what up till level up point. It, it also shows the incoming DPS towards your character, and you can see uh, what is your weak points, what are your strong points, judging from the graph. And the other thing which is very beneficial by using this mod is that it can auto-loot all the lore nodes, materials, as well as rare items. So let's clear this room. Then let's move on down. Keep in mind that this area contains a lot of secret chests, which can be opened by, which can be first of all reached by destroying the destructible walls and then open by clicking on them. So be on the lookout for destructible walls. Right now I'm just trying to group two stack mobs as close to each other as possible in order to hit them all with the force wave so that's the for, uh, that's the that's why i was standing on one place and not moving f um, to and not trying to move to avoid any uh, incoming damage 
but you need to keep in mind as I said that my resistances as well f physical elemental and towards chaos and vitality as well as towards ether are on the higher side of things so you are you definitely need to be on the lookout if your resistances are not as high as mine so far i haven't encountered any secret stashes around here maybe on the next floor also it's a great area well almost every area of the roguelike dungeon is great if you want to farm experience or and or specific item so for example if you want to try and find a specific item that only drops in the certain roguelike dungeon you can check it f what type of roguelike dungeon it is on the website called grimtools.com and what type and where it can drop and then if you are lacking the experience towards this item like if you are not if you are under leveled somehow you can definitely use, um, do a couple of runs in the roguelike dungeons like this one and your problem with the experience uh, most certainly will disappear due to the fact that monsters right here are usually f two or three levels higher uh, than your character right now so right now i am almost cleared the third the first floor excuse me of this dungeon so far no so far no challenges another lead right here let's use mark on him Right now I'm collecting everything from green items up till blue and of course legendaries but there will be a point in this dungeon where my inventory will be full and in this case I will drop a couple of green items especially the ones which doesn't have my type of damage on them simply due to the fact that I know that at the end of this dungeon you will be facing against the against boss of this dungeon but that's not the point so after you will defeat him behind him there will be four I believe it's four chests which will be full of loot full of loot excuse me so even if you drop something right now, and even if I'm willing to drop something right now, I will definitely can stack stack again my inventory up to full at the end of this dungeon. Right now I'm just checking how well I can tank and soak up all the damage with the Mark of Torment. So far so good. But once again I am a little bit afraid to do the same thing on the final boss of this dungeon simply because he can also... Oh and right here there was a destructible terrain and behind it you have a secret stash 
so where was I? Yep. So the final boss of this dungeon can also apply a resistance reduction towards you as well as hit you very hard. He can stack the damage. I think he is utilizing the same force wave, only his type is the fire ones. Fire one. That was a very good idea that I haven't stepped further in this room because I have killed one elite and then three spawned at the same place. So let's check this stash. Got, got an achievement called the Fields of Despair. Let's head towards the entrance to the second floor and then let's continue on with this dungeon do I have any blueprints just yet? yep I do so the rampage relic, physical and bleeding damage as well as some attack speed and some blueprint towards the legendary helmet on pierce and bleeding damage Okay, let's learn it as well. Quickly try to re reorganize my inventory. Let's continue with the clearance of this dungeon. The highest amount of crit I have seen was 20 something K from one hit and you need to keep in mind that internal trauma type of damage can stack so basically uh, it doesn't mean that you hit once with uh, the target with the 20 something 20 K and then your damage will somehow be lesser the the thing is, if you hit a target with a crit, especially uh, if the dot damage has a start to crit, the target will be crit uh, suffering from those crits as well. So every second, I believe every second, the target will be hit hit with the twenty k damage as also, or in this case, thirteen something k. Or thousand. Well, well, I like to refer to thousand uh, with the K letter. So for me, it's easier. So let's see what type of elites lurk around here. So far, just some yellow monsters which has spawned behind me for some reason like you see you always want to look out for your surroundings especially in these types of areas since you never know where monsters could spawn The one unfortunate thing, however, is that uh, I will be fighting a boss right now, but that's not unfortunate thing. The unfortunate thing is that I do not have the quest line from the Anasteria. The quest that uh, basically will say to you that you need to kill, need to collect the ingredient from this boss. So this means that later on I definitely need to get back here in order to kill this boss once again and to collect its ingredient so I have managed to kill the boss let's kill all his copies Yep, even his copies are dead right now. Okay, so let's continue on. So 
So for anyone who has just tuned in, first of all, hello. My name is Alexander, also known as Sander Yevitz. I am playing right now a game called Grim Dawn on hardcore difficulty with veteran included. I'm playing on the normal difficulty, first out of three possible. And right now I'm clearing the second floor of the roguelike dungeon called Bastion of Chaos. Right here is a better example of how you can kill, well, if not kill all, but reduce the number of monsters, especially there's an elite right there, without even opening the door. In case you are you're feeling that your character are, is not strong enough to deal with all the types of monsters when your character is surrounded, you can safely, well, if you're playing a caster type of character, whether it be a melee type of guy or a ranged, like a shooter type or a mage, you can safely kill all the characters from the back of the entrance of this room. So we see my inventory is full, I need to reduce the number of my items in my inventory. So first, let me turn off the auto pickup system from the Grim Internals and then let's drop some items which I will not need, like this tunic, this mage armor, perhaps even some shield, not the legendary shield, so this shield I will be keeping, this shield, some clothing and let's reorganize our inventory so from this point on I will just be checking if any of the green items have physical or internal trauma type of damage the rest I will just ignore up until the end of the dungeon Because as I've said before, at the end of the dungeon, you can safely stack up up to full your inventory once again. Because from the uh, when you kill the final boss, behind him will be four chests which will drop to you basically the rest of the items that sh that you need. Cold elemental, not this and just to all damage so let's continue that was another example of a hidden stash by the way let's try to reduce the numbers of those mobs before we enter this room I can do so with this group of mobs also. I also remember that there will be a merchant around here which can sell some rare materials, perhaps even blueprints. But first, I need to come to him first. Find him and then talk to him. I believe in every roguelike dungeon there will be a merchant. However, you need to keep in mind that this merchant only sells stuff. He will not buy from you any items that you have in your, in your inventory. So if you are planning to stack up your inventory and then especially if you're playing for the first time in this game. If you're planning to stack up your inventory and then sell all the items that you have, all the unnecessary items that you have to him, the line will basically tell you, the, the text will be highlighted in this way. This merchant will not, or this character, I do believe it says this merchant, will not accept this item. So, for anyone who 
is trying to fill up your inventory twice in this dungeon, that's actually a bad idea. And it will not work. Let's apply Mark of Torment towards this elite, and then let's try to nuke him. So let's check. Nope. No physical or internal trauma. Acid, vitality, as well as more vitality type of damage. Let's head to the western side. Not the western, eastern side, excuse me, of this floor. Somehow I don't, I'm not hitting them. Okay, right now I'm hitting them. The amulet that just has the random stats, just without any specific ones. Usually, usually what you are looking for, no matter what character you are playing, you are looking for your specific type of damage. If you see an item that's that will give you just physique, cunning, and or spirit with some resistances, this item considers a bad one to equip and to wear it. So let's say you are playing lightning type of guy. So lightning type of guy, but you uh, the second type of damage you are looking for is, I believe it's called electrocute. So this item, Savage Effigy of Celestial Wrath. It deals lightning and ether. So, to me, it's kind of a bad one. I mean, it gives also the pluses to storm box of El Elgolot. But you need to keep in mind that if you're playing with the electricity, with the lightning damage, the second type of damage that you're looking for is electrocute, not the ether. So let's continue on with the clearance of this floor. So far no physical or internal trauma. Every other type of damage but not the damage that I'm looking for. Okay. Do I need to go back or do I need to continue on? Let's actually first continue on. No, that's actually a portal to the third floor. So in this case I need to go back. Well, that's a bummer. I thought that I was heading in the right direction and the entrance to the third floor was in the western area. But hey, good thing that I have movement speed from the soldier ultimate as soldier exclusive skill as well as some augments on the boots which give me more movement speed so that less time can be wasted on running around let's quickly dispatch from this group of mon monsters let's try to hit them through the wall Do not, by the way, do not be like, I can dance, well, in this meteor, not forever, but a very good amount of time. S uh, if your resistance is towards elements such as fire, cold, and lightning are near to 70 or 80 percent, uh, you need to be more afraid, not of those crystals that deals fire damage, but of those that deals like let's say vitality or chaos damage I 
let's dispatch of the last monsters right here and then we can go down and finally talk to blacksmith not the black the vendor and check if he has any good materials and or items but first let's kill an elite which is guarding him So he is almost dead. Yep. So he has the rare two handed axis. Unfortunately, by the looks of it, it seems that mine is better in terms of damage. When it comes to weapons, let's see what he has when it comes to blueprints. So he has one blueprint. Let's buy it. Let's actually learn it. So lightning damage, more lightning damage, and then spirit. Oops. Did I just sell it? Yep, I sell it back to him. Okay, never mind. So I learned it. Let's check the rings, elemental, and cold damage. And I can actually... By all the rest, the rest of the relics, and that is that's it. So you see, if you try to sell these items, the line will says the following: this vendor will not accept that item. And you might think, especially if you're playing for the first time, hmm, maybe he will accept only the specific items, such as blue ones, or yellow ones, or the legendary. No, he in general will not buy any items from you. So, once again, if you were planning to stack up your inventory and sell some, sell some stuff or go, trade some stuff for gold with this vendor, you cannot do this. Well, in this case, I have missed my turn. Again, that's a bummer. In this case, let's head to the third floor. I believe the third floor is the final floor of this dungeon. The second floor also did not was that difficult. Let's see what challenges awaits us at the third floor. So, Entropy. Group of regular mobs. Let's kill the ones who's hitting me from backside. This is actually a good uh, item if you're if you're playing with the electrocute and lightning type of damage. So you see, it has lightning, electrocute, offensive ability, casting speed, eater resistance, elemental resistance, as well as reduced stun reduction, reduced stun duration. Excuse me. Oops, wrong button. I think I will pick it up. Possibly for the future characters, who knows. Once again, destructible wall, which had a stash. In this case, this stash was full of gold. So, yep, like those crystals you need to be worried if your resistances towards vitality damage are on the low side. Not the ones which deals fire damage. Let's move back a little bit. Manage to hit one le level up more. So, raid bound? Nope. 
not the one I'm looking for. Let's level Mark of Torment more, as well as put one point into Physique. Let's head towards the northern area. Of this dungeon. If your resistances towards chaos as well as vitality damage are on the low side of things and you are fighting in this location, then it's a good idea to try and kite all the group of monsters like in, in the areas where the crystals are not working. They will disappear for sure when a certain time will pass. However, in the midst of combat, you will definitely not you will definitely not be keeping track of how many time will pass and if the crystal will disappear or not your primary primary your first priority excuse me will be to keep your character alive and to dispatch of monsters so if you are constantly hit, uh, getting hit and your hp bar is depleting just from the crystals then uh, it's a good advice to move back and the kite monster and kite monsters around those crystals. Excuse me, not around, but away from the crystals. This is a nasty enemy because it has a reflect on it. But let's use the mark on it, and then try to nuke him. So the mark is working. Yep, he is dead. The other elite is also dead. Again, raid bound and purging, not my type of damage. Let's head this time towards the western side of this dungeon and check what lurks there perhaps at the end of this dungeon I will get another legendary but who knows Another destructible wall, another hidden stash. Hmm. Vigorous chainmail, gauntlets of battle fury. Physical damage, some offensive ability, and battle fury proc, as well as some resistances. Definitely worse than my gloves right now. And some ring of arcane balance. That's it. Well, let's keep those and continue on. Well, this area is almost cleared. Let's head to the next. Let's start again with the button. So three elites and some regular mobs. Let's use Mark of Torment on one of them. Let's dispatch of the others. Physical lightning damage, that's not what I'm looking for once again. Metal energy and some casting speed. 
Mm, no, I actually I don't know about this epic chest armor, however. So pierce damage, poison, some offensive ability, poison resistance. Uh, nah, let's keep this as well. Let's head in the northern area. Clear all the monsters that I haven't cleared yet. Simply for experience purposes. And let's to the next let's head to the next area. I believe I'm approaching towards the end boss of this dungeon. So while I'm doing so I can give you basically a couple of tips of how you can fight against him. So basically he will be using as a main offensive ability he will be using the blade arc debuff as well as fire force wave. So, something, uh, some skill that looks like Mind Force Wave, but with fire effects. And also the area around which you will be fighting in will be uh, covered from time to time with crystals, which will deal to you some chaos damage, as well as some vitality damage and physical damage, and some fire damage as well. So, my strategy when I fought him as an Inquisitor, back in summer, was just to debuff him and run away from him. I believe this will work also with the Death Knight, but let's try it nevertheless. So here he is, let's use Mark of Torment first, and apply Hit and Run technique. Yep, so basically the danger of his force wave also that he can stun you as well as apply some resistance reduction so whenever you feel that he's about to do it basically and your stun resistances are on the low side of things basically try to avoid try to step back and to the right or the left depending on where you at at the map right now so right now he's almost dead. Let's see. Yep. I killed him. And I got from him poison for cleaver. Of eater. It's a bummer that I haven't got from him the... Just the regular one. Okay, but let's check also his loot. Like I said, he has the several. He has several chests right here, which you can click on and gather all the loot. So first, it's Pierce Fire. Let's check the other one. Lightning Eater, and then the final one. So, any blueprints? Let me quickly check and reorganize my inventory a little bit. So, cold lightning gloves, eater damage, physical internal trauma, physique plus two to force wave. Let's pick this one. Some movement speed, chaos reduction. No, that's not good either. Well, 
basically I am picking the rest of the items simply due to the fact that I need to fill up my inventory and that's it. And I actually got a blueprint, Vortex Stone. Let's learn it. And then let's head back to the portal, which will lead us to the entrance of this dungeon. You see where I am? I am at Necropolis interior. So let's head to town and sell all the green items which I do not need. So Caster Helm definitely be selling all the one-handers, all the shields, all the range stuff. Rings. Let's check the other inventory slot. So Pierce Cold, that's not it. Elemental. Physical bleeding, that will be good, useful if I was using the blade. I believe it's called blade arc. Yep. So I'm selling this as well. Chaos poison, that's not useful. Let's check the other slots. Once again, many of the items. Yep, that's definitely what I need. Rare of hand codex, which deal physical and internal trauma damage. Nope, thank you. So selling all the shields. As well as one hander stuff. Nothing useful so far, in terms of items from inventory, I meant. What about the last slot? Seems like I'm in no luck here either. Cunning, cunning again. And just one hander, one hander weapons, as well as this axe that is actually worse version of, of mine. Let's check. Perhaps vendors have something to offer. Nope. Hmm. Should I change this amulet? Nah, I think I'll sell it. Alrighty then, let's dump all the materials into the stash. Into common stash, as well as craft items. By the way, that's what I was talking about. So, I, uh, in terms of legendary items, I have two weapons. Legendary one-handed mace, which looks like a shield. One legendary one-handed mace, a hammer. And this shield, actual shield. And as well as, well as gloves, which I'm uh, wearing right now. So let's dump scrap, blood of Ketone. And reorganize the rest of the stuff. So my goal is to craft the Juggernaut Relic. So I'm missing the... Uh, I'm missing Calamity. As well as Alron's Blood and Mistborn Talisman. I do not have any Tainted Brain Matter in order to craft Calamity. 
I have a Blaze Sworn Talisman, Gunslinger, but not Mistborn Talisman. And for Oleron's Blood, let me double check. I do not have necessary Ectonic Seals. Yep, so I will be wearing the Equilibrium for how many levels it will take in order to gather all the rest of the ingredients. So, in this case, let's actually stop the summoning of the Lahorian. I believe it's the final quest of the... Final main quest of the vanilla content. Let's head to the tomb of the Watchers. And let's clear the final areas before the final boss of the original game. Okay, so right now, as far as I can see, my resistances towards Aether and Chaos are 78%. Let me quickly double check how much will I get from constellation called Empty Throne. So, um, one second. So, 8 more for Aether and 8 more for Chaos. And for this difficulty, I believe it's more than enough. Or the first one, at least. It will be eight, uh, more than 80 here. And 80 ether resistance is 80% there. So... Now, I believe that after, after completing this constellation and... Picking uh, the Chariot of the Dead, the... Uh, another one. I will be focusing towards getting, towards boosting my defensive ability in general, as well as boosting my internal trauma type of damage and physical. I am planning to pick this devotion, um, this constellation, how is it called? Hammer. So it basically boosts internal trauma, defensive ability, as well as physical damage. But I will be doing so after I will complete Empty Throne as well as Chariot of the Dead. By the way, for anyone who is wondering, I'm not using any guide to play this character. I only... I have seen what other people have done with him, their builds, quote-unquote builds, their skill dist distribution as well as devotion, but all of them uh, have strongly advised to basically try to make your own character Quote unquote, make in Grim Tool in uh, on the website grimtools.com. You can do this by clicking on the build calculator and from there you basically can assign how, how, my, how, how many points do you need in each skill. And you can see what your character will look like on certain levels with certain items. But I am not uh, against using a guide, so if you are feeling that you are a, a little bit confused and you need some further guidance, like a step-by-step -step tutorial, there are some good guides right there, actually even beginner friendly ones, so I'm not in any way, shape or form telling you to completely 
ignore any other uh, people opinion so if you want you can definitely use someone's guide that's up to you you play you can play this game however and build your character however you want to build so i have managed to see the destructible wall somewhere around here yep let's click on the chest Let's actually check if we missed something. By the looks of it, no. Let's move on to the northern area of the map. So this skeleton that you see from time to time is actually popping up from my constellation called revenant it's an ability called race of the dead so basically i have a 20 percent chance each time i use an attack an offensive skill in this case it's a force wave i have linked the skill to force wave to pop a skeleton and what the skeleton does is first it slows the target which he is hitting and second it reduces the target resistances and you can spawn multiple skeletons along uh if the fight is getting longer you can also you can spawn multiple skeletons and the resistance reduction can st stack up on each other mm, i do remember that somehow i can open yep so there's a loose torch in case you are wondering how do you open this room you can click on this loose torch Okay, so let's continue. Let's check the northern side first before we move on to the bottom side of the map. By the way, for anyone who is watching right now, you can ask in chat uh, any question, whatever question do you want uh, regarding the Death Knight character. I can answer you from my personal experience, up until this point at least, from the vanilla content. I mean, when it comes to skill allocation, some campaign difficulties, some general pluses or minuses of this character I am uh, willing to answer your every question that you will ask regarding the Dead Knight character so right now I have almost cleared first floor of this tomb there will be three floors the first two is just general areas with monsters and some elites the and on the third floor there will be a boss fight with the final boss of the original campaign or vanilla campaign however you like to call it Let's enter the room from the northern area. Let's check the small room first. Usually the small room contains chests that I am missing from time to time. And by missing I mean missing to open it. Uh, oh, and by the way, I forgot to add one more thing. So I haven't. I'm currently playing without any movement skill. So I am not leveling any blitz, any movement skill like blitz or its modification, blind sight. Why? Because uh, what I found in this game, well, for me personally, 
is, I said, it's very easy to get surrounded. And the thing is that in order to use Blitz efficiently, you need to level also its modifier, which is called blind side. So you can level one, you can put one point here and then the rest of the points here, which reduces the target's defensive ability. However, from my experience with using the this, those types of movement skills, I have uh, used it already on my previous character, I have tried to use it on the Inquisitor, and I have found out that more often, uh, more uh, times I was getting surrounded simply because, oops, I have clicked on the wrong, uh, wrong entrance, I was getting surrounded simply because I wasn't, I wasn't selecting the target properly, or I was selecting from the beginning the wrong target, so for me, playing without any movement skill is better, simply because I am always trying to play with one thing to with one thing in mind to keep away of uh, retreating. And with Blitz, I I have found that I was uh, getting surrounded many times, so it's basically for me it was not worth to pick. But once again, it was just my experience and my opinion. Yours can be completely different. And if you like to play, if you cannot play without any movement skill, then by all means, you can pick whatever movement skill you like. So right now I'm clearing the last area before the final boss of the original campaign. Let's see if final boss of the original campaign will give us a challenging fight or not but first I need to come to him when it comes to enemies the last location you will be fighting just the Catonian demons of different varieties and some cultists I believe the final enemy of this area will be uh, cultist, which will be guarding an entrance towards the final boss. So once again, the damage types of those monsters in this area will be uh, chaos, vitality, physical damage, and perhaps some elemental damage, but that will mostly come from uh, and from elite modifiers such as electrified, so on and so on and so forth. So not from the enemies themselves, but from their modifiers. One thing that have come across my mind recently is that uh, the atmosphere of of this game and the uh, all of the enemies as well as some of the NPCs and people who are you encountering in this game reminds me of Darkest Dungeon. I even thought at what point that at what points at one point, excuse me that somehow Darkest Dungeon uh, World and Grim Dawn was interconnected. But I was wrong about it. But never the, nevertheless, I do like the atmosphere of this game, as well as its music, their enemy designs and world and lore. So 
for anyone who is interesting in uh, those types of games you are welcome to try them so so far as i can see i have managed to clear the more than half of this room of this area excuse me so i'm slowly approaching my way towards the end Oddly enough, that the last area before the final boss do not have big amounts of elite monsters. I mean, so far I fought mostly regular white mobs and the yellow ones, and that's it. One would think that if you try to protect the final monster of the game you would be spawning everything you have in terms of elite also to protect it but not just the regular ones regular dudes okay let's actually ignore the last area and head straight towards the entrance you see that's the last cultist guy who is protecting the entrance towards the final room let's quickly Dispatch him. Try to dispatch from him. Mark, Mark of Torment worked well in this fight. This portal actually uh, teleports you back towards the entrance of this Tomb of Watchers. So if you... Want... Wait a second. Why is this weapon... This weapon actually is better than mine. So spell weaving. It has mine doesn't have okay, so it basically have more casting speed. And some more physical damage. I will be definitely equipping this before the final boss fight. What's the difference? So plus two and two twenty, and it's plus five hundred eleven. So the superior obsidian war cleaver is actually better okay so in this case let us first teleport back towards the homestead to buy to buy the potent stone tusk hoof and then we will get back to devil's crossing and change weapons so potent where is it potent stone husk hoof all right let's get back to devil's crossing let's change those items let's apply all runs blood wait a second yep all runs blood as well as stone husk hoof towards this item and then let's head back and kill the final boss of the original campaign Okay, here we go. Let's apply Mark of Torment on him. Wait a second, I have... 
Yep, I was stunned. So, so far I'm, I am just standing on the place, yep. Let's kill Elise first. So, and then I will cast Mark of Torment on him again. Yep, Mark is working. Yep, I believe it's now quote-unquote phase 3, the last phase. Let's apply one Mark of Torment one last time and I believe it will be the death of him. Yep. So, the final boss is killed. And I now my access elite now I my access elite difficulty. Let's check his chests. Did he drop something interesting? I got another two achievements. So empowered revenant's edge, cold vitality frostburn. So cold build basically. Empowered Bleeding and Pierce damage. Savagery, I believe it's a skill that Shaman is using. And this one, Empowered Cindervine Mantle. So fire damage, burn, vitality damage, vitality decay. Alrighty then. In this case, <coughs> excuse me, let's head back to the portal. This portal will lead you to the entrance of this tomb and let's speak with the Inquisitor to get our reward. You've returned. So a great moment of triumph is Another achievement. Cult's defeat at the Necropolis marks humanity's first major victory in this conflict. Well, as a reward, I have gotten a legendary gloves. And spirits. Word of this victory will spread and give people hope that someday this nightmare will truly be over. Yet we cannot forget those who sacrificed their well, lives. Well, if I click, how can I help? The cutscene will play. Okay, let's watch the cutscene. That's very loud. This is too dangerous. I need to find another way. The Rift Gate! Something's coming through! <coughs> Inquisitor Creed! Devil's Crossing was attacked. Take it easy, John. What's happened? Uh, some new kind of ethereal. Just smashed right through our defenses. We need reinforcements. We're in bad shape. Hmm. I'll send help, but I can't spare much. We're equally pressed here. The loss of Algrim to the Void may be more serious than you realize. Algrim is dead, Creed. You must know that. My people need help now. We won't survive another attack. John, I... It came from Malmoth. That thing that attacked Devil's Crossing. I escaped the city with a small group two weeks ago. Most died crossing the burning fields. My father was pulled into the bog by cannibals. I had to leave him. I was the only one who made it to Devil's Crossing. Malmoth has been a living nightmare since the Grim Dawn. I was part of the resistance there, if you can call it that. The Ethereals toyed with us, as if we ever had a chance. They let us fight on because they needed us. 
needed our bodies for the grotesque things they make deep beneath the city. You think you're safe here, behind your stone walls. But those things from Malmoth will keep coming, and they will find you. And no fortress will ever be able to save you. A chilling tale, indeed. In our fight against the Chthonians, we've overlooked a growing ethereal threat. We must find Algrim. But maybe we can aid Malmoth at the same time. You've already done a great deal. But we must ask for your help once again. We need you to strike at the heart of the ethereal invasion, far to the east, in the ruined city of Malmoth. Interesting. Somehow they have changed the cutscene, because I remember it differently back in the summer. Perhaps in the new patch, they, in the new patch, excuse me, they have changed it. But nevertheless, that was a cutscene, sort of a prelude to the things to come in Act 5. Nevertheless, Good, that will be on another stream. I thank you everyone for watching, whether you tuned in, uh, tuned in not that long time ago or you were here from the beginning. I wish you all the best and I will see you on the next stream when I will be heading towards the Melmont and Act 5 in the first DLC. Good luck everyone!